Слава Богу, брати і сестри. Вау, I have chills, I'm shaking. That was amazing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to see just how powerful our God is, how much energy he gives us, and it just, just his love makes us want to sing so loudly and so proudly and, and speak so loudly and so proudly of him. And brothers and sisters, good morning. I'm glad to see you all this morning. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Happy New Year. It's the season. There's snow outside. There's decorations out. Um, everybody's setting up their Christmas trees, and uh, everybody is just a lot happier, and it's awesome. It's great to see. And brothers and sisters, um, this month, as was said at the beginning of service, we, are, we have a, a series that's a whole month long that's going to be preached in morning service, in evening service. It's all going to lead up to that great, wonderful, joyful day on Christmas Day, Um, that's centered around the verse that our, that our brother read this, this morning as we started off around Emmanuel. And brothers and sisters today, I just want to jump in right away into two verses, two verses that we're going to focus on mainly this morning and, um, and some thoughts that I just wanted to share with you. And so before we even get started, let's look at Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, that's the first verse that we're going to read. It reads, After sending them out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. And the second verse from Romans chapter 3, verse 23 All of us know this verse, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This morning, these two verses are the ones that we're going to be focusing the focal point of this message. And before I get started, I want us to think and look at these two verses in its context and see what does it have similar between the two. If we look and examine them, we can find the common theme in both of them. The theme being the failure of man. Today's message is one that may be more difficult to hear, one that we may not want to face, but it is a message that needs to be faced face to face, and that is the sin of man and the broken communion with our Father. If we look at the very beginning of Scripture, the very beginning of Genesis, we see that God was creating everything in this earth, the trees, the mountains, the rivers, everything that was beautiful that we can see to this day. And he also created man. He created man with the purpose to cultivate the land, to watch over the land, the animals, to make sure that everything was proper and that everything was taken care of. God also noticed that when he created man, it wasn't good for the man to be alone. And we see as we continue to read that God had eventually taken a rib out of man and created woman. And normally when we hear this, these verses preached, it's usually associated with the topic of, of marriage, um, of how it's not good for the man to be alone without a wife. But if we look at that verse, if we look at that passage, and we look even a little deeper, we can see that it really just isn't good for man to be without communication with someone else, with other people. It isn't good for man to be without fellowship. And brothers and sisters, it is never, it is never good for a person to be in isolation. When we are in isolation and alone, that is when we are the most vulnerable. That is when our guard is knocked down. That is when we give devil the strongest opportunity to trip you up, to cause you to fall, to cause you to sin. There is a reason that the elders in our church push being in ministry so much There is a reason that they do that. They're not just bothering you just to bother you. They're pushing you to get involved in choir. They're pushing you to get involved in Sunday school, in security, 
in, in whatever it may be, because it is good for man to be in fellowship with other believers. It is not good for man to be alone. You are powerless when you are alone. When you are a part of communion with other believers, you have a support system around you. You have a support system there so that you are able to face the hardships in life when they come, when they happen, and you're not alone. And I say when because it is when they happen. It's not if. It's not if you're going to face a hardship, if you're going to face a difficulty in life. You will face difficulties and challenges in your life. It is a given. And when you have a support system, when you're part of a community, when you're part of a group of believers, you have people there that are able to pray for you. You have people there that are able to check up on you, to see how you're doing, to help you through that difficult part in life. If you try to face it alone nine times out of 10, you're going to lose. The devil is going to win. He is stronger than you. But when you're in that community, you have such a better chance of being victorious over the difficulty that you're facing and ultimately growing stronger in your faith because of what you had to go through. And if we continue reading this story, we all know what happened next. God warned Adam and Eve about not eating the fruit from a specific tree. And what proceeded to happen next is what leads us to lose communication, lose relationship with God, and that is sin of people. Adam and Eve ate from the tree that God had commanded them to stay away from. And from the context that is written, we can assume from the response that Adam gave in, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 12, I just want to quickly read that, brothers and sisters. Genesis chapter 3, verse 12 reads, The man replied, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. From this response, from this context, we can assume that Adam wasn't present when Eve had, had taken the apple from the tree. And if that is the case, if that is what happened, then that furthermore shows just how dangerous it is for man, for woman, to be alone. Because the devil is sly, he is sneaky, and he is manipulating us and tempting us into sin all the time. Just as he had done with Eve and Adam in the garden. Again, when we sin, we sever that communication that we have with God. We cut the line of communication that we have with him. We stop hearing from God and we stop feeling his presence in our life. And in turn, when we sin against God, we understand that what we are doing is wrong and we begin to try to hide it from God. Our human nature is so foolish to think that it can hide something from God. Something that I remember growing up is my father telling me, you may be able to hide something from your friends. You may be able to hide something from your family. You may even be able to hide something from your church. But you will never, ever be able to hide anything from God. God sees every little thing that we do on this earth. And unfortunately, our ego and self-confidence gives us the idea that we are able to hide something from him. Adam and Eve had the same response after they had disobeyed God and they tried to flee and hide themselves from God. They hid because they knew what they did was wrong and they didn't want to face God and take ownership of their own wrongdoing. How many of you can relate yourselves to Adam and Eve's situation? I would venture to guess that every single person in this building has been in that exact situation. Knowing that what you have done is wrong, something that isn't acceptable before God, and trying to keep it a secret from everyone, including God. I know I have. I know that every time that I mess up, 
Every time that I fall short of my promise to God, the Holy Spirit doesn't give me peace in my soul. My friends, listen to me closely. Please listen to this next sentence closely. The moment you start to lose the feeling of guilt, the moment you start feeling less and less convicted by the Holy Spirit, that is utterly the most fearful state you can be in. Because that is when you start to completely lose any connection you have with God. That is when you should utterly feel the, fear the well-being of your soul and where it is at and where it is going. When God begins to go quiet, that is when you can find yourself in such a deep hole it can almost be impossible to get out of. And when we sin, when you blatantly disobey God's commands, God is forced to expel man from Eden. The great tragedy that we read in the book of Genesis, as we read at the beginning of the message, as we read in the beginning of the message from Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, we read that God had expelled, God had removed Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. They were no longer allowed back in and were punished for their disobedience to God's command. A punishment that we to this day still endure the effects as humans as we are born with sin in our hearts. We too face the same punishment for our disobedience to God, just as Adam and Eve had faced. Friends, dear church, if you live a life of sin, whether it is in secrecy or out in the open, you are destined to a life in the lake of fire, a life spent in hell for eternity. God will not allow a sinful man to enter through the gates of heaven. We don't even have really the mental capacity to fully grasp the thought of eternity in heaven or in hell. Especially at a younger age, it's hard to imagine even this life that we live coming to an end. It feels like we have so much more to live on this life, let alone spending your next life somewhere forever without an end, without ever being an end to it. But the fact is, there is no other way around it. There is no gray area. It is black and white. You are either on the path to heaven or you are on the path to hell. And the reality is, my friends, if you are living a sinful life, the fact, the truth is, you are on a path to hell. That is the roadway that you are heading down. Thought and preparation forced me to evaluate my own life. Where am I headed to? Am I living a life that is acceptable to Christ? Am I obeying his commands? Am I being a true and faithful servant of Christ? I don't want to stand before you and be a hypocrite. I don't want to act and pretend like my life does not become impacted by sin, because it does, just like every single person's life does. But because of the support system that I have around me, because of the ministry that God has so graciously allowed me to be a part of, I'm not alone in my fight against Satan and against his temptations. And because Jesus' love for us is so strong, I want to end my message on a slight hopeful note. And that is that in the midst of being drowned by sin, in the midst of darkness and hiding from God, God is still out searching for his children. Adam and Eve attempted to hide from God when they had committed their sin. And although they had sinned and disobeyed God, God was still looking. God is still knocking. No matter how dirty you are, no matter how fractured your relationship is with him, he is still searching for you to come home. 
He wants to help clean you up. He wants to restore his relationship with you. Brother or sister, for those of you who are sitting in the pews today, and I know there are those of you sitting in the pews today who are lost and on the pathway to hell. Jesus is searching to free you from your addiction. Jesus is searching to free you from your unhealthy lifestyle, unclean lifestyle. Jesus is knocking and he's knocking, but he can't do anything unless you allow him to do something. Jesus will never force himself upon you. You have to be willing to let him in. But if you do, he will restore you. If you open up, he will come in. I know there are a lot of you who hear these words right now and have a heavy heart, a heavy burden that they've been carrying for far too long. Let Jesus show you his love and his mercy. Let him carry your burdens. Feel the freedom from the chains of sin that only Jesus can provide. I pray for you today. I will continue to pray for you day after day. Don't be afraid. Take the step. Let Jesus find you in your darkness and bring you out into the light. Jesus is searching even when we are hiding. Dear friends, we were born for communication with one another and for communication with God. And when we sin, we sever, we cut that line of communication that we have with our Father. And because of our sin, we try to hide from God pretend and act like it is not there. And because of the sin that is in our lives, we are expelled from entering through the gates of heaven, just as Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden. But through the darkness of our sin, there is still hope found in Jesus, in Emmanuel. Jesus continues to search for us, and knock on the doors to our hearts to free us from the chains of sin and give us new life in him and restore our communion with the Father. My friends, my church, please do not ignore the call of our Father. Do not hide. Let his love and forgiving hand cover you and lift your sin and burdens this morning. Amen. Let us stand and pray. And brothers and sisters, those of you who are English speakers, I urge you, pray. Pray. This is your opportunity to pray. It only takes one courageous soul to lift your voice to God. And please feel free to pray in English, in Russian, whatever language you're able to. Now is your opportunity. Let us pray.